Heather thinks about software. Every few years, people start predicting the death of Silicon Valley. Over the years, plenty of places have marketed themselves as the next Silicon Valley. We've seen New York, Silicon Alley, Los Angeles, Silicon Beach, Boulder, Silicon Flatirons, Boston, Route 128 Technology Corridor, Chicago, Silicon Prairie, Austin, Silicon Hills. Mostly, these alternate tech centers sprouted up because of arbitrage opportunities in real estate. Silicon Valley was once a sleepy expanse in the suburban sprawl between San Francisco and San Jose, and startups could easily afford offices there. As the world went on, the real estate values in the valley skyrocketed, and startups pushed out to other areas, including San Francisco. In the cycle of boom and bust, the epicenter of startup culture has wandered between Palo Alto and San Francisco. When real estate gets cheaper in San Francisco, as it is right now, businesses start to move in. As it gets expensive, including both demand-driven rents and high taxes and regulation, businesses look elsewhere. Right now, San Francisco is reportedly in a doom cycle, but I think it's more likely that this is just a long, slow recovery from the pandemic. Many businesses fled San Francisco in 2021 to 2023, but that is mainly because virtual work made their expensive offices unnecessary. We've been through those real estate cycles before. This flight also allowed tech businesses to cut some of their profligate dorm room mentality perks and get back to business. Silicon Valley is still the tech center of the world, and that's unlikely to change anytime soon. Silicon Valley as a cultural construct started because it had two things, talent and money. The talent was fueled by Stanford and Berkeley, the two leading colleges on the West Coast. I don't count Caltech because it's so much smaller and very few startups actually seem to come from there. Sorry, Sheldon. The money was on Sand Hill Road and the infamous Venture Capital Mall. Today, especially post-pandemic, geography matters less and less. Money will travel and talent will too, whether physically or virtually. The offices on Sand Hill Road, some of the most expensive commercial real estate in the world, are mostly empty pied-a-terres. Talent is everywhere. Even so, Silicon Valley has the highest concentration of tech startups in the world. Why? Well, despite the high rents, people just like living here. I read an article recently suggesting alternative locations for tech startups. The article was from about eight years ago. The suggestions in that article were Shenzhen, China, Hong Kong, Cebu, Philippines, Berlin, Germany, and Dubai, UAE. Let's see. Venture money is pulling out of China because of trade wars and fear of government takeover of private assets, not to mention a stagnating economy. Hong Kong is living in fear of an invasion from the PRA. Europe is on the brink of regulating the software sector out of business with the CRA. I've been to the Philippines, and while it has great mangoes, I can't see starting a company in a place where they need armed guards at the shopping malls. And Dubai? It's actually a jailable offense to go bankrupt there. More about that later. That list is fantasy, because there are a couple of very important elements necessary to build a startup sector, in addition to money and talent, political stability and business-friendly legal environment. Capital is a coward, so most investors won't invest in war zones or imminent war zones. That takes a lot of places off the table. As to business friendliness, People sometimes forget that the business of U.S. is business, and that's a good thing. In the U.S., you can form a company in a day, foreigners can own companies and property, and the courts of Delaware treat businesses like valued clients instead of pests impinging on their extended office break. That's not so much about the law favoring businesses. It's about not being openly hostile to businesses and not having regulation for the sake of regulation. Well, mostly. Many years ago, I learned an important lesson about why Silicon Valley works. It wasn't what I expected at all. I spoke to a group of lawyers and judges from Iraq not long after the end of the Iraq War. I was introduced as an expert on technology law. After I gave my talk, the floor opened for questions, and all they wanted to know about was bankruptcy law. 
You see, in many countries, bankruptcy is a crime. If you create a business and it fails, you go to jail. Famously, in Dubai in 2008, there were hundreds of cars abandoned at the airport because their expat owners had fled. In the U.S., you just declare bankruptcy and carry on. And even more important, a business failure is not the end of your reputation. In fact, we take that to extremes here. The list of famous tech founders who failed and then succeeded is pretty much a list of the most famous tech founders. Silicon Valley insiders know this truth. The power of the valley is the ability to fail. And what about the tech centers in the U.S. who have vied to steal the valley's thunder, or at least ride on its coattails? Well, there's New York, which regularly expresses its hatred of tech businesses. I mean, you only have to use the crossword app for the New York Times to see how much hatred New York has for tech. They might as well use Clippy. And in L.A., the only real tech is CGI for movies, which is the real business of L.A. Thanks for the memories. There are a lot of tech companies in Seattle and Boston, but Seattle doesn't have any world-class universities, and Boston has plenty, but it's too admired in its Route 128 roots and is still pondering why Silicon Valley ate its lunch in the first place. So, sorry Silicon Alley and Beach and Prairie. And by the way, get new branding experts because for the last couple of decades, it hasn't been about Silicon at all. Liking and subscribing makes me think more. Heather thinks about software.